You're so worthy. So worthy. Oh, every day. So worthy. I clap my hands. Praise the Lord. I clap my hands. Praise the Lord. I clap my hands. You're so worthy. We're going to take it up. Oh, every 
into the house of the Lord. The psalmist said, let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Let us bless the Lord and praise his name, for we are the sheep of his pasture, and he is our shepherd. Father, we come today to worship you. You desire that we worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we invoke your presence in this place. Anoint every heart that we will sing praises to your name that we will partake of your word in the anointing, that we will walk according to your word in Jesus' name, because of such you are well pleased. And Father, we thank you for bringing us to this point in our lives, yes. sparing us one more day that the redeemed of the Lord have opportunity to say so. Yes. And Father, let our lives be the lights in the earth that men can see you and glorify you and fall out with the ways and come asking, what must they do to be saved? Amen. And in so doing, Father, let us be ready to answer every man in the blessed name of Jesus. As we enter now into your gates, we come to praise you. God, we have gone through some things during this week, but you've been with us every step of the way. You promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. And for that, we're thankful. Glory. God, we thank you for how you healed us, how you brought us, how you kept us, how you have protected and provided. It's in your blessed name we pray. Let us lift our voices and give praise to you for this one hour. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you, Lord. Oh, the Lord. For that song, those words, the Lord sure has been good to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We deserve not his mercy, but he gives us mercy and grace. And it certainly he's been good to us. Yeah. We're going to, while you're standing, we're going to read the scripture. Those of you that have your Bibles from 1 Chronicles, the 16th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. 1 Chronicles, that's in our Old Testament, the 16th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. And I have uh, the King James Version here. The writer writes, beginning with verse 23, Sing unto the Lord, and the earth, all the earth show forth from day to day his salvation. Mm -hmm. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. 
For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared among all God, above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in, this, in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. Amen. Amen. This is that scripture. You may be Amen. seated. We now do our congregational hymn. But in being seated, we expect you to use your hands to clap and praise God for what he has done for you, brought you to another day, and he has promised to carry us all the way. Uh, that's encouraging to me because yeah. I can't do this by myself. No. I'm not able to, but God has provided, and we should rejoice in the Lord. And the song is Just a Little Talk with Jesus, I believe. Just a little talk with Jesus. How many times have you had just a little talk with Jesus? And he does big things in our lives. But the choir is going to need us to join in and help. And so we are going to do that. Put your hands together and say something.
This is what my grandmother used to say. She used to say, it's all right. My grandmother used to say, she used to say, it's all right. 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 All right. It's all right. It's all right. Just to have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. It's all 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 right. All right. I turn to your neighbor and look at him and let him just say, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Now turn the other way. It's all right. All right. It's all right. Come on, let's let everybody in church know. Have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. All right. All right. Praise God. We just thank God for his word. Thank God for the songs. Uh, we're going to now pause to have our offering as the ushers come forth and bring a box. We thank God for giving us that we have to give and we should be obedient to him and do what he has called us to do, even in worship. It must be done in spirit and in truth. Our mighty God, we thank you for this offering. We thank you for the stewards over it, God, that you will guide and direct them what's best for your kingdom here on earth. And Father, as we pray, we pray for the givers, uh, those who have given out of their resources. We thank you, God. You, we know that you're going to bless them because you said you would. And Father, we thank you for having a place to come. We know it takes expenses and all these things, but you have provided for everything. And we say thank you, Lord. We want to do this out of obedience to your word, not from somebody dragging us across the head. We want to be willing givers. And God, we pray that you would touch us, God. We don't come up to what you have called us to do. Lord, have mercy. Let a man examine himself and do that which you called us to do. We thank you for this offering and may it be used for the building of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. Glory. All things. approach the closing time of our worship service, I would like to encourage you to invite some of our members to church to come out and fellowship with us, because when we come together and put it all together, God blesses us in the midst, and it would just be so wonderful. So you don't have to go get somebody you don't know. Just bring those that we do know. Just bring one, just one, in Jesus' name. We thank you. Um, President, there's nothing else, I guess. This is where we stop. I thank you for allowing me to be your worship leader this morning. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Staten. Come on, church. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. As of course, we a, here at Carries, we have made the decision that every once a month we're going to observe black history and history of people of black color in our, in our time here in America. And I think uh, that our media team, amen, has a presentation they're going to give us at this time. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Do we have a presentation?
was born, the color line in America wasn't just a fact of life, it was the law of the land. But by the time I was old enough to go to college, black students had begun to integrate the nation's historically white colleges and universities in significant numbers for the very first time. The key to our rise was affirmative action. In 1965, Lyndon Johnson goes to Howard University and he gives a speech where he talks about the need to have affirmative action in federal employment and federal contract opportunities. You do not take a person who for years has been hobbled by chains and liberate him, bringing up to the starting line of a race and then say, you are free to compete with all the others and still justly believe that you have been completely fair. In the following years, affirmative action would dramatically transform college admission policies, and I was among its first beneficiaries. The class that entered Yale with me in September 1969 was comprised of the largest number of black students ever admitted. All too soon, however, Affirmative action came under attack. The pushback against affirmative action was almost immediate. In 1977, Alan Bakke applied to go to medical school in the University of California system. He was denied entry, and so he sued saying that lower standards had been applied to African American entrants. What Alan Bakke complained about was the fact that there was a set aside for 16 students of color to gain admission. His argument was that he was being subject to reverse discrimination. Alan Bakke won his reverse discrimination case today, but affirmative action programs to help minority students won also. The Supreme Court ruled that racial quotas were unconstitutional, but it upheld affirmative action programs that take the ethnicity of applicants into account in college admissions, both to help overcome past discrimination and to foster diversity as a core value of the educational experience. Since then, affirmative action has further been rolled back, mostly through cases related to college admissions. With current litigation pending in the increasingly conservative courts, affirmative action's days may be numbered. There's never been a period where any effort to integrate African Americans into American society was not immediately denounced as preferential treatment. Adjusting the criteria for admission for students of color who have not had the same kind of access and who frankly bring a different knowledge base uh, to the university, that's not preferential treatment. That's equal access.
there for me even when I wasn't right you came into my life now I'm walking in the light you came into my heart you gave me a new start that's why I praise your name Lord you have been so good to me I don't know about you, but I'm going to say it again. This is the Jesus. You've been there for me, even when I wasn't right. You came into my life. Now I'm walking in the light. You came into my heart. You gave me a new start. That's why I praise your name. Lord, you have been so good to me. Thank you, Jesus. I really thank you, Jesus. I really thank you, Jesus. I really love you, Jesus. I really love you, Jesus. I really love you, Jesus. I really need 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 you, Jesus. I'm going to praise you, Jesus. I'm going to praise you, Jesus. I'm going to praise you, Jesus. I really thank 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 you, Jesus. I said, yes. Come on, say it. I said, yeah. Let's say it again. What a time.
Give God the honor and glory this morning for another opportunity that we have. He has brought us to this place to worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, let's have a word of prayer this morning. Amen. As we prepare to hear the Lord's, amen, the word from the Lord this morning. Father, we're grateful. And Lord, we're honored again as we come to this place. We thank you, Lord God, that you told us in your word where two or three are gathered together agree, as green as touching, Lord God, you would be in our midst. Thank you, Lord. And so, Father, as we come into this place, Lord God, we give you the honor. We give you the praises. We give you the glory. We magnify your name, God, yes. because your name is above all names. Yes. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Thank you, Lord God, for the anointing. The God that supplies all of our needs and destroy every yoke. We thank you for the assignment, God, you've given us. That, Lord God, we should stand and proclaim that you are God and beside you there is none other. Now, Lord, I thank you that you brought us all to this place. One have one need, one has another need. But, Lord God, we all need to draw closer and closer and closer to you. Your word said if we would draw closer to you, you would draw closer to us. So, Lord, thank you for your presence already here. We don't have to invite you in, God, because you are omnipotent, omniscient, and I'm not present, God. You're everywhere we go. You have all power in your hand, Lord God. Yes. But you know everything we go through. Lord, we surrender this morning, God. We pray you just stir up the gift that's on the inside of us, Lord God. We pray, God, that you give us brain power this morning, God, that we would be able, Lord God, to rightfully divide the word of truth that your people would hear you or your voice and a stranger they shall not follow. Thank you, God, for what you're doing here at Carries. We know, God, that you are a God of generation. You're the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, God. You said you never leave us nor forsake us. You say you change not, Lord God. So we thank you this morning, God. You're the same God that you was on yesterday. And God, you'll be the same God on tomorrow if you allow us to see tomorrow. Now, Holy Spirit, breathe in this place. I believe these bones can live if you breathe. And God, I thank you through your word, Lord God. We're going to prophesy, God, that you and glorified, you in heaven would be glorified. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you. And we give your name the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands. And we first give God the honor and glory again this morning for another opportunity, for another day. Aren't you glad to be here, saints? Amen. Many, many people, amen, don't have the opportunity we are having. Amen. Choir kept saying we give him thanks. Amen. We thank God, amen, because he's God and besides him, there is none other. Amen. And so we praise him for him being God all by himself. We thank God this morning for our wife. Amen. We give God the honor and glory for the first lady and all that God has ordained her to do, that she would do it with the spirit of excellence and most of all the spirit of obedience. Amen. Yes. Thank God for you, Reverend Staten, as always. Amen. For you standing and staying. Praise God. Some people done left. Amen. But you still standing and staying, Reverend Staten. Amen. So we praise you for that. Amen. So we give God the only glory for that. Thank God for our deacons this morning. We praise God for our deacons. Amen. That are in the ministry here amen to assist us i know you're praying for your pastor amen you're praying for the congregation that we as a people that god will continue on shielding us and keeping us from all hurt or danger thank god for these trustees amen i don't know if you when you drove up on the on the on the uh yard this morning you saw that the trustees have allowed they were allowed the uh black top is changed amen yes, sir. 
It's, amen, refurbished. It's repainted. So we praise God that they are still doing what they do. Amen. And even the light. Amen. The light above me is fixed. Amen. This morning. So we praise God for that this morning. For our trustees. Amen. amen. They're doing an excellent job. I don't know. Come on, clap your hands this morning. They are doing an excellent job. I am telling you, saints of God, these trustees are doing an excellent job to make sure that we as a people here at Carries that we are taken care of when it comes to our safety and most of all when it comes, amen, for our financial status to be in good, good standards before God. And I want to give God the honor glory for these trustees this morning. Thank God for our urchins, amen, Brother Eddie, amen, his beautiful wife, amen, Sister Carolyn. Raise your hand back there so everybody know y'all, amen. <laughs> Praise God for our urchins this morning. We give God the honor glory. But then we thank God for our guests this morning, our, our Niece is visiting here, amen. I see a, another young lady back there in the back, and we have a guest here, amen. Brother Chris, raise your hand, young yeah. fellow, amen. Praise his holy name, amen. I see a young lady in the back over here, I think there's a guest as well, amen. Praise God for you being here this morning. We just thank God for all our guests this morning. Come on, saints of God, give God a hand cover of praise this morning for our guests coming by, amen. You are not take that lightly, amen. Anytime guests come in the room, amen. We know it's God doing the drawing, and so we praise God for that this morning. Thank God for our choir. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for this choir this morning. Amen. We praise God for me. Saints of God, we thank God for you. I want to especially thank you for last Sunday. Amen. I want to thank you for last Sunday, saints of God, for you coming out supporting not only just your pastor, but, but supporting the Founders Day, amen, that we was uh, a part of being celebrated last week, amen. I don't count it lightly. I don't count it, amen, slackly that you would take time out of your day to be a part of what God is doing outside of this house with the ministry he's called us to do. And so I want to thank you. I really do. I want to thank you, amen. I want to thank you from the depths of my heart for you supporting, amen, amen. The Bible teaches us according to the scripture my sheep hear my voice, and the stranger they shall not follow. That's what the word says. Yep. And so you're showing me, amen, on this particular occasion. Now, we'll see what happened on the next one. But on this particular occasion, you're showing me that I'm not a stranger to you. That's what you're showing me, <laughs> that you will follow, amen, when God leads me okay. into other pastors. And so I praise God for that this morning. So I want to thank you. I really do. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for you being a part of that last week. Like I said last, last week, I had, amen, uh, Mrs. Lovick, amen, uh, Mrs. Moore, and also Mrs. Uh, Clark to raise their hand because I wanted the congregation over there to understand that we got some folks that are, that are seasoned. Yeah. Amen. They're still pressing their way. Amen. It's no excuse for any young folk person to say, I can't do. Amen. When Miss Lovett go to the gym every day. Amen. Come on, raise your hand again, Miss Lovett. Raise your hand up so everybody can see your hand. Amen. Go to the gym every day. Amen. She's my inspiration. Amen. And so I praise God for her this morning. So we give God the honor and glory. Amen for that. Amen. Turn me over to the book of Matthew, the 23rd chapter. Uh -huh. Matthew 23. We're going to talk about this morning practicing Practice what you preach, amen. From, amen, Matthew's the 23rd chapter, the first five verses, amen. Matthew's 23, one through five, amen. I'm truly uh, grateful to see Chris back there, amen. Chris yeah. and I, amen, we're from a relationship, aren't we, Chris? Amen, we're from a relationship. I'm telling you, that's going to be a trustee or deacon coming up. I'm telling y'all, y'all pray for this young man back here. I'm telling yeah. you. He's going to be one of our trustees of deacon coming up. Amen. Coming up. He really is. I'm telling you. Watch what I tell you. Amen. Brother Chris, amen. You uh, inspire, inspire me. Amen. I read your, your vision you gave me. I read what you told me. Amen. So praise God. We can check this one off for the month, okay? Praise his holy name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, uh, when we think about this morning practice, practice is a word that normally cause individuals to shy away from. Practice is a time where people come together in order to make what they do excellent even more. Practice is a way that you and I come together from a time of communication to make sure that we are covering all bases and covering all lines of engagement. If I could use the choir this morning, I'm sure they would probably tell you, Pastor, that sometimes practice, it don't go as well as in practice that they do it on Sunday morning. I'm sure you would tell me that. Because practice sometimes, amen, we come in in practice, 
And sometimes we may not have the right attitude or may not have the right focus. But practice, that's why we practice. We practice for those opportunities that God can help us become more and more as a team that he may be glorified. As a coach, amen. One of the things I've learned as a coach is that uh, in order for a team to be able to win at anything, they normally, if they have a bad practice week, amen, they're going to have a bad game week. And I've learned as a coach, amen, that when it comes to practice, practice is a time where a coach has the ability to put a strategy in. Yeah. He has the ability to put, not a strategy, but he puts standards in. And also, he can, amen, put, amen, a strategic moment where his team can be prepared to win at any cost. And you say, yeah. Pastor George, what does that have to do with anything we're talking about? Well, when we think about it as a born-again believer, sometimes the things that we preach, amen, we're not practicing. Come on, y'all might not go on what to say, amen, amen. Some things, amen, that we sometimes advocate for others to do, we don't do sometimes as a born-again believer. And that's why God is trying to really help us encourage that if we're going to be the light that shines in a dark, dark world, it's going to take place based upon our practice time with him. What are you All saying, right. Pastor? I am saying that every one of us in the room, if you call yourself a born-again believer, You've got to take time out of your day, your selfish day that you have scheduled out, and put time and pencil in that God would have some time with you. If you and I are going to be that type of person, that when we go out, our lives would be such of a man of asset that someone would influence someone else to come and be a part of what we're doing, it's going to take place in our practice time. As we think about the word of God, amen, on many different occasions, amen, according to the scripture, we can read about that Jesus, he took time out to make sure his disciples was prepared before he went, on, he went away. And that's why he tells us, according to the scripture, he says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. And all of us in the room, we've heard that old saying that says, a practice make perfect. We've heard that many, many times. But may I suggest you this morning, saints of God, that that saying should be changed. It should say, perfect practice make excellent Amen. Time of game preparation. That's what it should say. Because you can come to practice, Reverend Brown. Yes. And if you're not prepared, amen, for the choir to sing songs, amen, they're going to, amen, give us, amen, what, how you present that thing to them on Thursday. Even as a pastor, as a child of God, when I stand before you, saints of God, I'm just not up here talking. I practice, amen. I sit in my study, and I practice what I'm going to say, and I write it down and put it on paper. So when I stand up, amen, you will see that I've been spending some time with God, and it will lead you even closer to be a part of his life. And when we think about this morning, that's why the Apostle Paul makes a statement, according to the book of Philippians, when he says in the book of Philippians, he says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in my practice he says practice these things and the god of peace will be with you now if you think about that in scripture this morning first lady what paul was basically saying to this church he is saying that i'm going to use myself as, a, as an example brother justin uh -huh. i'm going to say amen what you learn and receive from me and heard now he says i want you to practice that thing and that's why it's so important that every one of us in this room and be involved in a local congregation because when you and I come together in this local congregation, we are reminded of how much God loves us. We are reminded how much God cares about us. We're reminded how much power God has in his hand. And we're reminded that God has the ability to change situations in our lives. Do you not know, saints of God, this morning is just a practice moment for all of us? All we're doing now is being prepared for what's to come next week. I don't know about you, amen. I, during my weekly time, amen, I have a lot of tests that takes place that God puts me in. Well, if, if I'm going to pass the test that God puts me in, it all starts with how I practice, amen. And when I practice right, amen, and prepare right, when God puts me in a test, I'm able to overcome the test at hand. And if there's any person in this room this morning, you said, Pastor, I keep failing over and over and over again. It seems like every situation I get in, 
I fell at it. Well, can I tell you a, a little small nugget? Maybe if you spent more time in practice, amen, maybe when the time of test come, you could pass the test. But we just sometimes, amen, think that you can just take a test, amen, and you're going to pass it at all costs. But the test that you and I take is an open book test, amen. It's a test that God has told us if we study to show ourselves approved unto God, amen, a, a steward should not be ashamed, rightfully divine the word of truth. When we come, when we go against a test, amen, if we practice right, we will pass the test. And hey, are y'all with me this morning? And so this morning as we look into the gospel, I want to show you according to the scripture that Jesus is preparing his disciples to not be like the Pharisees of the scribes. Why? Because the Pharisees and the scribes were people that knew the law. They knew the book. They knew the Bible. But they did not practice what they were preached. You know how it is sometimes. You got people around you. They can quote scripture after scripture. That's a great thing. But when it comes to applying that scripture, well, they are nowhere to be found. Are y'all with me this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. They can be a know-it-all in Bible study. But when it comes that God puts a test before them, they sometimes are the first person that will fail the test because they don't practice what they preach. I wish I had one or two people in the room this morning that could say amen. I know that type of person. Amen. And all of us know amen. It's always one in the room that believe they know everything. Amen. They always speak out. They always trying to rebuke. They always trying to correct. But that is the main person who never ever puts it in, in practice that God may be glorified. In my life, saints of God, the reason why I believe where I am where I am at because not only do I am a man who understands the gospel Amen. A man who said the gospel, but I do apply the gospel in my life. Amen. I don't want to be a person, amen, that preaches one thing and do something else. Amen. I'm preaching holiness. Amen. And I'm preaching deliverance. But every now and then, I'm still, amen, at the liquor store. Amen. And still at the club. Amen. And doing things that God would not be glorified. Are y'all with me this morning? I want to be a man if I'm going to preach holiness. I want to live holiness. Are y'all with me this morning? So Jesus. Is with his disciples. And he's trying to help them understand not to be like the scribes or the Pharisees. Because the scribes and the Pharisees, just because they knew the Bible, that does not mean or did not mean they do the Bible. And so this morning there's three things I want to show you that Jesus teaches his disciples how they can practice what they preach. Well, First thing he teaches his disciples, first lady, he shows them in the first, that first verse, first, second, third verse, he says, listen, you are to always be a person that operates in respect. Okay, Pastor, why is respect? Respect is giving someone a high regard or give them an honor for where they're at. Look what the Bible says in the first three verses. He says, then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, he says the scribes and the Pharisees sit in, the, in, sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe. And do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Jesus says, listen, these type of people, the Pharisees and the scribes, they observe, they sit in a very, very high place. But they, they, I want you, when they speak, I want you to observe, meaning I want you to listen what they have to say, but do not do the things they do. So when we see in the first part of this verse, Brother Justin, we see that Jesus gives his disciples three applications when it comes to respect. He said, first of all, respect them because they are people that know the law. Now, I've come to realize that when it comes to people who, who can quote scriptures, amen, left and right, I respect them. But I've come to realize I watch them even closer. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. I look at them even with a more sharp eye because I'm seeing what they're, if they're quoting what they're saying, are they doing the same thing? Are y'all with me this morning? I wish I had one or two people that would have the spirit of investigation every now and then. That when people just saying things, you ain't just letting them say it, but you're keeping a close eye on them to make sure they are walking what they're talking. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that. 
Second thing we see in the scripture, he says, not only do I want you to respect him for what they, the seat they sit in, but I want you to observe. Mm -hmm. Observe means to notice what they are saying to you. Saints of God, I'm telling you, if there's ever an hour that you and I have to walk in the spirit of discernment, this is the hour. With so much internet, amen, with so much, amen, bad pub that's going on, as Trump will call it, fake news, you got to observe some things that you're hearing. Because everything that you are hearing is not the truth. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. So Jesus tell his disciples, he said, be very respectful. But he, he said, I want you to observe it, amen. I want you to keep a close eye upon them. And lastly, he says in the scripture, he said, not only do I want you to observe them, he said, but I don't want you to, I want you to be so respectful to me that you don't do the things they would do. Because why? These are Jesus' disciples, and they're following him. And we as born-again believers, amen, we got to learn how to be leaders and stop being followers, amen. Every voice, every doctrine that comes to you, you are not to sway to it, amen. I don't care how long you know that person. Every now and then you ought to step back and say, hmm, that don't sound right to me, amen. Sometimes we are people, when people bring things to us, just because it's someone we know, we automatically receive it. But can I tell you something, saints of God? I've come to a point in my life when people tell me things, I sit back and think about it, amen. And let me see now, is that really God talking or could that be that person talking? Because if, they, if it's God talking, I'll follow it. But if it's somebody else talking, amen, I'm just going to let, let it go. So he shows them in the scripture to be very respectful. And I'm telling you, saints, saints, saints of God, I've learned this, that we live in a world we live in an hour where people are not respectful towards people any longer. Yes, I know that there are many people that are not swayed by my, my stand. They're not swayed by my faith. But all I have to ask you to do is just respect me as a person. Respect me the same way I respect you. Amen. I'm not down with homosexuality. Amen. I'm not down, amen, with clubs. I'm not down with hatred. I'm not down with malice and backbiting. But what I am down with, I'm down with love. Amen. Because God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall believe leave upon him shall not perish but have eternal life so Jesus says if you're going to be a person that practice what you preach it first starts out being respectful and I know that we live in a world where we sometimes can be rude and cruel to one another but God is trying to show us when he shows disciples he said listen even though these Pharisees and scribes are not somebody I want you to follow but they do sit in the seat of Moses. They do sit in a place who understands the word. And there, if there's ever a place that we ought to be respectful of, we ought to be respectful in the house of God. Amen. Because why? Just like you think that you matter to God, amen, that next person that sat beside you matter to God as well. Are y'all with me this morning? I know I'm not going to get too many amens, amen, but I know that what I'm saying is the truth this morning. You matter to God like I matter to God. I matter to God like you matter to God. And that's why we get each other's presence. We ought to show each other respect. Are y'all with me? That's why James says, according to James, the first chapter, 22nd and 20 through 24th verse, he said, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. He says, deceive in yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observe himself and go away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So James helps you and understand when a man read God's word and don't respect it, Come on, he'll walk away and forget everything that he learned. Are y'all with me this morning? And that's why, saints of God, you ought to ask God that he would fill you up with the spirit of respect because I've learned, you can even learn something from the drunk man on the street, amen, if he's telling the truth, amen. I've learned, amen, you can learn something from a person who's not, amen, of your, of your, of your class or your culture, but based upon if you respect them. My father-in-law told me a long time ago, he said, young fella, when an old person tells you something, don't never tell them you told me this before. Like I said, he's because sometimes old people repeat themselves. Amen. I'm kind of older now. I tell the same story over and over and over. He said, you don't tell them 
You've told me this story before. Why? Because they may tell you something in the story the next time you didn't hear before. That's right. What my father-in-law was teaching me, first lady, is to be respectful when I'm around people. And saints, if there's ever a time in our lives that we need the spirit of respect on our lives, now is the time. If we're going to draw the masses and the multitude into the house of God, it's going to first start by being respect. Second point, are you with me this morning? Yes, sir. Not only did Jesus teach his disciples, practice what you preach by being respectful, but he shows them in the scripture, Miss Barker, he said, I want you to be responsible as well. Now, how do you pull that out of the pastor? Look what verse 4 says. He says, for they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear. They lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Okay, what was Jesus saying here? Well, in Jesus' day, during his time, Sister Tracy, in Jesus' hour, he dealt with people who would take a donkey and load that donkey down. And they would walk right beside the donkey and wouldn't even give the donkey a helping hand. Mm. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that we live in an hour sometimes, saints of God, the Pharisees and the strive, they'll tell you what you should be doing, load you down, delegate it on you, and they know where to be found. Are y'all with me this morning? I wish I had one person be honest in the room this morning. So Jesus says, they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. As a pastor says, God, you will be amazed of how many times people come to you and tell you what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. But when you say, can you help me out? Amen. No, oh, no, I ain't called to do that, pastor, but I'm, I'm telling what you're supposed to be doing. Are y'all with me this morning? Yes, sir. So Jesus is trying to teach them a lesson to say, listen, if you're going to be a person that practice, you got to be responsible for what you preach. Amen. I can't be a person, amen, that preaches the gospel and don't pay my tithes. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I can't be a person that preaches the gospel and don't support other ministries. Why? Because... If I'm going to be responsible for what God has called me out to do, I've got to do the whole circle and not just have the circle. Anybody with me this morning? Yes, sir. So Jesus says right here in the scripture, when you practice what you preach, you come to be a person that's responsible. Praise God for carriage, saints. Amen. Because many of you are very, very responsible people. Many of you are wearing different hats in this ministry. You're doing multiple things. Yes. But some people ain't doing nothing. Wow. Amen. Some are not doing anything. And when you approach them about doing something, they say, well, now they, the spirit ain't led me. What spirit are you talking about? Amen. <laughs> because the spirit I know says, amen, the greatest one among you is the one who knows how to serve. That's what the scripture, the scripture said. Are y'all with me this morning? So he says right here in the scripture, for they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on their man's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So that's why the Bible says, according to the scripture, according to Luke, the 12th chapter, 48th verse, it says, to whom much is given, much is required. Praise God for that much. Because if God gives you much, there is much required. Are you with me this morning? Last point we need to see in the scripture. So we see that if we, when Jesus talked about practicing what you preach, he said, he said, tell them to be respectful, to be responsible, but the last thing he said to be to recognize. Now, recognize means to identify someone or something. When you recognize something, you identify with it. Look what he says in the scripture. He says, but all their works they do <laughs> is to be seen by men. Now, I can stop right there and preach amen to revive. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes people... When they do something in the audience, they want credit. They want you to know they did it. They, and please don't misunderstand me. It's nothing wrong with being recognized. Right. But if that's the only reason why we do what we do, we're not doing it for God. Are y'all with me this morning? Yes, sir. So he says in the scripture, this first part, when they do it, these Pharisees, when they do it, they do it to be seen by men. They make their, 
They, uh, you got to help me with this word, philocatry, amen. I'm going to just say that's the word, amen, philocatry, boards, amen, and enlarge their borders of their garments. Now, when he talks about that word philocatry, amen, what he's saying, if you ever saw Jewish people, Jewish men walk around with this little box on their head, well, that is a box, amen, where they believe they put the law on the inside to say this is what we're doing, amen, because we want to let people know that we're very holy. If you go out and you see those men with those black hats on, they have this little box. In that box, amen, the law is in that box. So what Jesus is trying to tell his disciples, don't be like those people with those big egos. You know how people are when they got big egos. Big egos, I got to let everybody know what I'm doing. I got to tell everybody what I'm doing. If they don't validate me, Candace, I'm not going to be a part of them anymore. Big ego people, amen, say recognize me for what I do and not knowing that God is the one who gets recognition. So he says in the scripture, he said that they, they go around. They, they don't recognize that it's me and me alone who gets all the glory. And that's why the Bible says, according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, the sixth verse, he said, but thou, when you pray it, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which is in secret, amen, shall reward you openly. So, Pastor, what are you saying in this scripture? What I'm saying in this scripture, saints of God, I learned when I was studying this, this for this message, God showed me why people can get, amen, intoxicated with Facebook. Why you say that, Pastor? Because Facebook is a place where everybody's happy. You don't never see people on Facebook, amen, posting anything that's not good. They normally folks post everything that's happy. Well, when, when we as a child of God, amen, we don't do things in the hour that makes people happy, amen. You know, you, 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 you will, when you, if you're going to make people happy, that means you become a clown. Clowns, amen, make people happy, amen. We are people that want to make God glorified in our lives. And so this last point, Jesus tells them to recognize who you are serving, recognize why you're doing what you're doing. And I'm glad you're, you're with me this morning. So my brothers and sisters, I come to a close this morning. As I look at the life of Jesus, well, Jesus was a father who practiced what he preached. How do you say that, Pastor? Because first of all, Jesus was a peacemaker. That's why the word of God says in Matthew, the fifth chapter, ninth verse, it says, blessed are those peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. They are pre they are peacemakers because they practice what they preach. Not only was Jesus a peacemaker, but he was the one who many people could feed upon. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the Bible says in John, the fourth chapter, 34th verse, Jesus says to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Lastly, not only was Jesus, amen, a peacemaker, not only was Jesus that one that, one, that, that someone could feed upon, but Jesus was humble. And that's why he says, according to Matthew 11, chapter, the 28th to the 30th verse, come to me, all you who are, are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning? I am saying, saints of God, if you're going to be a person that practice what you preach, you got to go by the cross, amen. And that's why I thank God for the cross, amen, because it was at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light. And all the burdens of my heart, they rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and I am happy all day. Pastor, what did you see when you went by the cross? I saw, amen, if I'm going to be a person that's going to promote other people to live a holy life, it's got to first start with me, amen. If I'm going to be a person, amen, that's going to say you got to love, it's got to first start with me. If I'm going to be a giver, amen, if I'm going to promote others to be a giver, I just got to first start with me. So Jesus helps his disciples, amen, this morning like he's helping us, amen. We've got to practice what we preach, amen. We've got to practice. If we want to be respected, saints of God, you got to show people respect every now and then. If we're going to be people, amen, that's going to move forward in the things of God, amen, we've got to be that first person that does it. And all I'm trying to help us understand this morning, saints of God, that Jesus was dealing with the same things that you and I are dealing with. I know it gets frustrated when somebody's trying to tell you what to do and they're not doing it themselves. I know, amen, it gets, amen, sometimes I'm running your skin when people have the loudest voice, amen, but have the last moment to serve. I know it gets up on your skin, amen, where people will preach 
faithfulness, but they're never faithful. But can I tell you something this morning? The Bible said the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endure to the end shall be saved. Saints of God, you keep doing what God has ordained you have to do. And if you keep doing it, God will be glorified. Come on, give God a hand of praise this morning if you believe that. Jesus shows me time and time in the scripture that you cannot be like the Pharisees and the scribes and think you're going to draw people to Jesus. It's not going to happen. And so when I look at the word of God, I'm going to be respectful to everybody. Amen. I'm going to show, amen, I'm going to be responsible for what God has called me out to be. But lastly, I'm going to recognize that God is the one who gets the glory. And if nobody ever appreciates me, and nobody ever say thank you, it's all right with me. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And saints, you need to take that same attitude. I know that you're going to do some things that some people ain't going to pat you on the back for. <laughs> but you need to come to, the, come to the conclusion. The word of God said that man looks on the outside. But God sees the heart. He sees the heart. He knows how committed your heart is to him. He knows how focused your heart is. Jesus talks to these disciples because he wanted them to understand, don't be like the Pharisees and the scribes. You know, when I was growing up, before I got praised, saints, I thought everybody in the church was hypocrites. Yeah, I did. I thought everybody was pretending. Why, Pastor? Because people were singing in the choir on Sunday, and we was in the club on Saturday night. I know, I know that that don't happen. That never happened here at Carey's. But the church I came from in South Carolina, it happened. I could tell you all some stories, amen, but I'm going to stop right there. But I thought everybody was hypocrite until I got saved. And when I got saved, I started realizing there were some people in the church that were really saved. It's just the crew I was hanging out with was hypocrites. <laughs> Amen. The crew I was hanging out with. And I never saw anything wrong with it until I got saved. And when I got saved, I says, man, we can't be drinking beer and going in the church on Sunday and giving God honor and glory. We can't be, can't be getting drunk and doing these things. And we telling people, Jesus is Lord. He's able to deliver you. But I got this habit that I ain't letting him he deliver me. I know some of you don't think that way, but trust me, the young people think that way. The young people watch what we do, but they also listen to what we say. And if they're going to be a part of what we're doing, saints, we got to really practice what we preach. I'm not telling anybody in their own, you got to be perfect. But I'm telling you that you got to be mindful of your audience that you're in. You got to be mindful of the people you're around. You got to be mindful of what you say. I, that's why I thank God for working every day. Because I work in an environment where people are not saved. And when they get it, when the devil start moving on them, I just sit back and laugh to myself. I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That's why, that's why I stay in my office. Amen. I only come out when I need it. I always say, come off and among those evildoers and be ye separate. If it ain't about work, I don't want to talk about it. Because that ain't my business what they're doing on their, per their personal life, saints. It's not my business. And so I'm telling us here at Carey's Baptist Church, let's be people that practice what we preach. Let's be respectful to one another. Let's, 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 let's take responsibility of everything that we're trying to call someone else to do. But lastly, let's be people that would be a person that would recognize that God gets the glory. If you never get recognized, if nobody ever mentioned your name, if I don't say thank you to you from the pulpit, know that God thanks you. Yeah, know that God thanks you. If I don't ever recognize your name, know that God thanks you. Because at the end of the day, that's where all of us are going to stand before him. To hear him say, well done, I. That good and I, that good and I thankful servant. You've been faithful of a few things. Make you rule over many things. You know, I've learned that 
when it comes to ministry, there's a lot of egos in ministry. And if people believe they've been there longer, people believe, amen, they gave more, they believe they ought to get more recognition. But that ain't how it works with Jesus. Jesus said the last will be first, and the first shall be last. Many are called, but few are chosen. I don't know where that comes from. It comes from Satan. Please don't misunderstand me. Everybody needs to be recognized. Come on, take your head and pat yourself on the back. Everybody needs to be recognized. But every now and then, you got to recognize yourself. Because everybody, trust me, we are not on everybody's mind. Like God, like we're on God's mind. So if a person don't recognize you, does not mean that they don't love you, don't care about you. That means right now their mind is on something else. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. That's our word for this morning. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Practice what we preach. Pharisees and scribes, people of great honor, great dignity, sit in very, very high class seats. But Jesus teaches his disciples not to be like them. Mm -hmm. He says, go in the opposite direction. This morning, maybe somebody in the room this morning that's not saved. Maybe somebody in this morning, room this morning said, Pastor, you know, I don't have enough strength to practice what I preach. I want to do the right thing. I want to be like Paul, what Paul says in the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. He says, the good I will to do, I don't do. He says, the evil I will not to do, it seems like I'm always practicing it. That's what the scripture said. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of sin? Well, I guess I got to put my mind on Jesus and not keep my mind on the flesh. That's what Paul said. So in order for us to practice what we preach, our mind got to stay on Jesus. But maybe somebody in the room this morning, you're not saved. The Bible said in the book of Romans, 10th chapter, 9th and 10th verse, it said that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus believe in your heart that God is raised and from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation anyone in the room this morning you're not born again amen you're not practicing what you're preaching amen you you're trying to do the right thing you cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit you cannot do it with God's help with God help all things are possible with his help, without his help, nothing is impossible. It may appear though you're going forward, but I promise you, saints, you'll be like Peter. You're thinking you're walking on water until all of a sudden the wind starts blowing, and you'll find yourself sinking. But if you're, if you're a child of God and God calls you to walk on the water, when the wind and the storm comes, you can still walk. Because he, greater is he that's in me yeah. than he that's in the world. So if there's anyone here this morning, you're not saved. Anyone may hear this word over the internet or may hear it over YouTube. God is able to save your soul. He's able to deliver you. If you just say in your heart, God, I, I repent. I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me. He's able to do that this morning. Well, Father, thank you again this morning for a time, Lord God, that you've given us, God, just to remind your people that you are God and beside you there is none other. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that we would be a people that would allow the word to be a two-inch sword. That God, the word would draw the sinner man to salvation. But God, it would sanctify the saint to be more holy to you. Lord, thank you for this ministry you have called us to. Thank you, God, for these people that you called us to to remind and encourage week by week that you are God who said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. Now, Lord, I pray that the word has been sown this morning. That God, your people, we, your people, Lord God, will be respectful people. God, we'll be responsible, but most of all, God, we'll recognize that it's you and you alone who gets all the honor and who gets all the praise. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you stir up the gift that's on the inside of us, Lord God. That God, what we do, Lord God, will last because we do it in you in the name of Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you continue on filling us up with your power and your anointing. 
God, we would run and I'd get weary and walk in our faith. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you'd anoint us afresh, Lord God, that when we leave this building, that God, when people see us, they would know that we are your children by the love that we have in our heart. I pray in Jesus' name this morning, God, that where there may be, Lord God, affliction, that where there may be, Lord God, hurt, where there may be, Lord God, sin, where there may be, Lord God, uh, uh, need deliverance. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would do it on our behalf today in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you love us enough that you teach us not to be like the Pharisees and the scribes. You teach us, Lord God, that even though they sit in a great place of honor, observe them. But don't do the things they do. Lord God, we're in the midst of people every day that's in the great honor. They sit in great places. But God, I pray that we would be people that would observe them, but not to do the things they do. I thank you for that word this morning, God. That's a word of wisdom. It's a word of direction, God, that helps us navigate in this dark, dark world in which we live in. Now, Father, continue on keeping your hand upon Carrie. I praise you, God, for the people that you've drawn here. Lord, we don't ask for 199 people. We just ask, Lord God, for the ones you've drawn here, Lord God, that we be on one accord, that you in heaven may be glorified in the name of Jesus. I bless you and I honor you, God, that we see, Lord God, what you're doing in this place. We know what you're doing in this place, Lord God. And God, we take great expectations with patience to believe by faith that it shall come to pass. Now, Father, be glorified. Be glorified, God, as we continue on going into this dark, dark world. Lord, we want to be your light. Lord, let the anointing rest on our lives that people will be drawn to us, God, that we can tell them that you are God. And besides you, there is none other. That, God, we can tell them that the earth is the Lord and the fullness there are and the world and they that live there in it. That we can tell them, God, that all things have passed away and behold, all things have come new. We honor you and we praise you. We give your name the glory and the honor, Father God, for the strength. For where we are weak, God, you are strength. Strength us, Lord God, in our weak areas. Build us up, God, when we're torn down, Lord God. Give us courage and confidence, Lord God, when we lack. But God, most of all, rebuke the spirit of fear out of our lives that we would know you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. We give your name the praises. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, clap your hands. You believe in this Praise God for you, saints. Amen. All our guests, we praise God for you. Amen. Thank you for stopping by. We pray that the word has been beneficial to you. We pray, amen, that you came in. You leave out better than you came in. Come on, choir. Bless us. Amen. With our closing, he closing song as we get ready to leave this place. And now may the grace of our Lord and the sweet community of his Holy Spirit 
God, let it rest, rule, and abide within our hearts. God, I ask you to go before us, tear down what needs to be torn down, build up what needs to be built up. Father, we'll forever give your name the honor, the glory, and the praises. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make sure you hug somebody. Tell them you love them this